This video was made by Peter Klotzbach, student of CSE 199. All right, so in 1988, there was this guy named Robert Morse who created this thing called the Morse worm, which would exploit vulnerabilities in certain software to spread copies of itself from computer to computer. He intended for it to be harmless, but there were some unfortunate side effects. You see, one would think that it would make sense for the worm to leave computers it had already infected alone, but Morris was concerned that this would make the worm trivially easy to kill. People could just run processes that would tell the worm that their computers already had it installed, preventing the worm from spreading through their computers, and thus preventing the spread of the worm altogether. So, to counteract this, he made it so that one out of seven times, the worm would install itself anyways, even though the computer already had it installed. And this is exactly what made the worm so destructive. Many computers ended up with thousands, yes, thousands of copies of the worm within 24 hours of the original worm's release. Infected computers would slow down to a crawl, unable to do anything except run these copies until they were taken off the internet and thoroughly cleaned of the worm. Even worse, ridding a computer of the worm could take up to two days, and putting it back on the internet would almost immediately inundate it with new copies. But wait, how did this happen? Wasn't there only a 1 in 7 chance that the worm would create an extra copy of itself? How could the worm multiply this much if the chance for it to be installed the second time was less than 15%? There's no way it could have done that much damage, right? Well, let's run a little test and see how it plays out. Imagine a network of 15 computers, all connected to one another. Say one of them gets the worm and infects the other 14 computers. Alright, so now they all have a copy of the worm. What now? Well, now each of the 14 new copies tries to spread itself to the other 14 computers, and each attempt has a 1 in 7 chance of succeeding. Some basic arithmetic shows that we should expect about 28 successes, which means there will be about 28 new worms in the system, and these 28 worms each try to infect the other 14 computers, putting 56 new worms into the system, which then turns into 112, then 224, 448, 896. Yeah, considering this, it's pretty easy to see how the worm got out of control. So, how was this problem dealt with? Well, to start with, the entire internet had to be disconnected, and every infected computer had to be cleaned out. And then, only when they were absolutely 100% sure that a computer was cleared of any trace of the worm, could the computer be reconnected to the internet. Needless to say, this was a huge ordeal, and it took several days to sort out. So, what happened to Morris? Well, he was convicted of a felony under the 1986 Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and, as a result, was sentenced to three years of probation, 400 hours of community service, and a fine of over $10,000. Today, he's a tenured professor at MIT, and has gone on to win the SIGOPS Mark Weiser Award for his research on operating systems. So that's the story of the Morris Worm. It brought down the entire 1988 internet and infected around 6,000 computers. We're lucky nothing quite like it has been created since then. With the sheer number of computers on the internet today, it would be nothing short of catastrophic.